Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barr, and at Looking Point, we help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today, we're going to be talking about Firepower Threat Defense and Firepower Management Console. What the caveats are? Let's go! We're back and today we're going to be talking about managing FTD through FMC. Now a number of our engineers got together and they talked about some design considerations and really coming up with some best practice designs and we discussed those live in kind of a tech talk stories from the field type of way over a web meeting and we went through some design solutions. So let's cut to that discussion right now. All right. Hey guys. Hey Sean. How's it going? Good. Uh, we're talking Firepower, Threat Defense, FMC, uh, and some architectures that work and some that we wouldn't recommend. Um, I think you guys have been working with it for a while now and have run into some, I guess, really just design considerations that, that as you're designing these solutions, things to think about. And so um, thanks for stepping us through it. Yeah, you bet. Um... So yeah, so a lot of our customers are, are replacing their ASAs um, with FTDs these days. Um, and and we've, we've done a number of uh, FMC deployments, a number of FTD deployments. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we end up finding a working solution. Um, but we've learned some lessons uh, along the way. And so that's what we're hoping to share with you today. Um, and I'm going to bring up a diagram that we can kind of talk through uh, as we move along. So this diagram gives a good... Um, design, an okay design, and a high risk design. Um, and like I said, any of these designs you can make work um, if you, you have enough patience and, uh, and you have enough ingenuity to, to do so. Uh, however, you know, we try to stay to the left of the yellow here. So we try to stay, um, keep all of our designs um, and all of our customers uh, in the good green category. So um, what that means is that our FTDs that are managed by a firepower management center across the WAN, they use an out-of-band management connection, right? So a dedicated management port um, going through that, that branch network and connect to the FMC through a separate WAN router, right? So the key here in this good design is that our FTD is not relying on its own data interfaces to make its way back to Firepower Management Center. The connectivity to get back there is provided by the network outside of FTD, if, if that makes sense. And using this topology, um, we can deploy a single FTD at a remote site, um, or we can deploy it in an HA fashion. And, and both uh, we would recommend. Moving over to the OK complex, um, category. Here we have the, the FTD terminating the um, WAN itself, right? So you can imagine you've got that remote site ASA, you got an internet connection coming into it, and you spun up an IPsec tunnel to connect to your head end, and that ASA is providing the WAN in that fashion. So again, um, this, this topology um, works, um, and we, we're okay supporting this as long as our customers have a single FTD at that remote site. Um, and the way that we support this here is we use um, a data interface for management of the, the FTD from FMC. Uh, and perhaps Trevor, you've got a little more experience recently than I do with this. Um, mm -hmm. You wanna tell us a bit about how that, that works? Yeah, so uh, basically, you know, the, the traditional out-of-box uh, way of managing the FTD is through the dedicated management port. Um, but in the recent uh, iterations of the, uh, the FTDs, uh, they allow you to move that to like an outside interface. Um, and this basically uh, takes the chicken and egg situation where you have to configure the firewall in order to get the FMC, but you need the FMC in order to configure the firewall. Uh, kind of out of the equation. Um, but the only issue that we currently have is that it doesn't support HA. Um, mm. The reasoning being that uh, anyone familiar with like the Linux engine or like the ASA is how failover works is, you know, the active firewall assumes that that first, that primary IP. 
um, and then it flips whenever the uh, failover occurs. Um, with uh, FMC, each of the firewalls have to be talking to the FMC over a unique IP address that doesn't change. Um, so that situation kind of breaks essentially the, the rule for, for FMC, um, which is why it's not supported. Okay. Uh, and, and then in this um, topology, now our, our management traffic is, is no longer using that dedicated management port on the FTD, but we're, right. we're using uh, one of our, what we call data interfaces, our internet interface in this case. Um, so that management traffic is actually making its way over the internet back to FMC. Is that right? Right. Yeah. It has its own, I mean, it is encrypted. Um, it uses its own like DTLS tunnel um, back to the fire power management center. Um, and so, so it is still encrypted, but it's not over an additional, you know, VPN tunnel um, or MPLS or, you know, whatever other WAN technology you want to use. Okay. Now what happens in this topology when we, we don't have a static um, IP on from our ISP on the outside of our FTD. Does that break this topology? Um, no, it doesn't break the topology. Uh, it, you can use what's called a NAT ID um, in order to get that set up with the FMC. Um, one of the caveats, though, is the FMC then also has to be on the internet, so you have to have a one-to-one -one, one -one NAT um, so that you can get to the FMC since there needs to be at least one, you know, IP that uh, they can start the conversation with. Um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so you can use the NAT ID. It'll, it's basically just a unique string um, that identifies that firewall to the FMC, um, similar to like an IP address would uh, if you were to have a static IP address. Okay. Um, and I understand that you have actually deployed some HAFCDs uh, in this topology where the FTDs at the remote site or the branch are terminating the WAN. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about what you had to do to get that going? Yeah, so it, it's not exactly the same as uh, what we were discussing because I wasn't able to use the, uh, the outside interface. Um, okay. It actually, the, the F FMC actually will not allow you to configure it that way. Um, it, you actually get stopped um, before you can deploy it. Uh, but what we had to do was a, a, a couple of multiple steps uh, to get uh, it to work. Um, it's, and basically it was breaking the two firewalls out of HA, uh, configuring one of the firewalls using the, the local onbox um, manager um, to do all your, you know, your PAT and your uh, routing and all the normal stuff you need just to get you know, internet access. Um, and then get the second firewall using its management interface going through that first firewall out to then talk with the FMC. Once we configured the second firewall with all of the normal stuff, we then you know, moved that over so that it, its management was then going through itself. Uh, at which time then we can blow away the configuration on the first firewall, get that joined to the firepower management center, and then bring the two together in HA. So it's okay, a so a little bit more involved than connecting to the console and putting a good config on it. Right. I think it'd be good to talk about the risks of that configuration. Like, so, so if you did do that, where the management is going through itself over VPN, um, Mm -hmm. you know, with... Well, I'd say anytime that you rely on yourself for your own manageability, um, you're, you're, you're putting yourself in risk of a bad config push, locking you out of uh, uh, being able to make any changes. I mean, as of right now, anytime that happens, uh, it's basically a rebuild of the firewall. Um, I mean, luckily with the FM, FMC, most of the configuration is done via policies. And so it's just a matter of pulling those policies out, rebuilding the, the firewall, getting it to join back in, and then putting the policies back on. Um, but it's still a, a you know an hour to two resource hour intensive. downtime, right. and requires yeah. a resource on site in order to you know yeah. physically yeah. you know uh, factory reset the firewall. Well, yep. the way you described it, though, it's not a straightforward just factory reset. Put an IP on it. It home phones home. It's it's probably you're down a day in that scenario, uh, at least, right? A, a yeah, long or a, a very late night with TAC kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I I actually had one um, where 
So, so right now, we, you guys did a perfect segue over to the high risk um, topology that we were going to discuss. And that, that is one in which the FTD is reaching the FMC by way of its own data plane and traversing through its own data plane interfaces, right? And, and I had one where uh, I had an OSPF adjacency between the FTD and the core switch. And that OSPF adjacency was flapping, right? So I had, I had about, you know, 10 to, to 20 seconds of good connectivity uh, from FMC to the FTD to troubleshoot at a time <laughs> when, when the issue was happening. Otherwise, um, FMC wouldn't, couldn't see the FTD. Um, and, and really, and, that, and that, that call, we never got past the issue. We ended up um, uh, moving to a topology that looked more like uh, what we have over here on the left. But you know, your, your point, Trevor, we're pushing a bad config uh, to the FTD could you know, leave you in a state where your FTD is orphaned uh, is a really good one. Um, and, and that is you know, why we have this type of design mar marked as high risk um, for either a single FTD or uh, NHA FTD. And I guess just to call it out, um, which I know we've kind of alluded to it, but you could do this design if you had a WAN on your WAN router, you either added a sub interface or another subnet, which had your management network and just attaching the management directly to the WAN where the FTD is out of path, right? Because it makes it look yeah. essentially like our good design. Yeah, exactly, right? And in that scenario where I was battling that OSPF adjacency flapping between the FTD and the core during if I if I had the management interface as you said connected between the FTD and the WAN router I would have had good visibility and reachability to that FTD the entire time while we troubleshot through that issue that in the documentation the you know tax may pull the well you're not running a, a recommended topology and that, that's kind of the wording they use where in the documentation they don't recommend that you push configuration changes to a remote FTD from FMC um, in in really either of our OK or a, a variant of our OK um, and and certainly in the high risk um, topology. Great. Well, I, I think ho hopefully this will help a lot of folks that are looking at doing this and uh, so that they don't put themselves in a situation that that uh, you know we've been been through as as you start to learn the requirements of of FMC and 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 what each of these systems require. So um, thank you guys for stepping me and everyone through it on this video. And uh, yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. No All problem. right, guys. We'll see you later. See you later. <laughs> see you later, guys. All right. See ya. Bye. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that discussion. We had Dom, myself, and Trevor as we step through the design considerations when deploying FTD managed by FMC. If I said anything, Dom said anything, or maybe even Trevor said something that you're like, hey, I, I wanna know more about that, make sure you leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.